Hi, my name is Kat and welcome to Ocean Pancake or Vegan Diver Cat. Today I'm going to be talking to you about sharks and the fear of sharks and how I can help you get over it if you are afraid of sharks and you're a diver or are just unsure about the whole thing uh, before hopping into the water. Before we get started though, I wanna say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. That is mind blowing that 10,000 of you decided to click that button and join the ocean warrior tribe. It means, honestly, thank you so much. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know. I also have a podcast, which I highly recommend you check out. This episode, this, video is actually kind of a spin-off of the episode I had on the Ocean Pancake podcast this week, which featured a marine biologist who is working with killer whales, orcas, which are my favorite sea creatures at all. And we get into a conversation about how killer whales will actually eat the livers of great white sharks and how killer whales have managed to move entire populations of great whites because they were scared of the killer whales. So anyway, let's get into it. I sent out a message to a heap of my friends, my colleagues, scuba diving instructors, photographers, marine biologists, travelers, to kind of ask them about their perception of sharks. Are they afraid of sharks? Are they not afraid of sharks? Why and why not? I also asked some of you guys on the Ocean Pancake page. If you're not on there, I highly recommend you go over there. We have great chats, share all sorts of ocean related news. So most of the responses I did have from my marine biologist friends were, no, we're not afraid of sharks. But then again, a lot of them have said that they haven't actually seen sharks in the water. So it is more of a theoretical lack of fear. While um, some of my diving friends have also said, no, they're not afraid of sharks. They look forward to seeing sharks in the water, but they pointed to the statistics of scuba divers being the least likely to be attacked of all the water sport activities. As we'll get into a bit later in the video, surfers and uh, basically surface level sports are the ones which have a higher likelihood of being involved in a shark bite incident. Now I had a very small fraction of people tell me that they were a little bit nervous by sharks, but they gave a few reasons for why. One was in uh, murky waters during the end of the day, dusk or dawn as well. Uh, some were worried about it when they were doing work on the Great Bear Reef and being towed along at really high speeds and um, said, well, gray reef sharks are just very territorial. Now, none of my friends or none of the people I know have ever been attacked by sharks. Um, I have a few good friends who are spear fishermen and they have many shark encounters on every dive they do with dead fish. Again, we'll get into that a little later on in the video. And again, they have said that they are not that afraid because they have had those interactions and they understand what the sharks are doing. So for this reason, I kind of put together my five reasons why you should not be afraid of sharks or five ways you can look at sharks and kind of just change your perspective um, from potentially killer shark human eating machines to apex valuable predators of our ocean. Let's go. So number one is learn the statistics. Now we are sitting on somewhere like on average, four people die because of shark bite incidents in the world per year, four. That is absolutely nothing considering how many people are in the ocean at any given time, whether this is spearfishing, diving, um, boating, kayaking, swimming, surfing, all those people, four people die. So just to start off with, that's a very tiny fraction. I have seen some documentation that you're more likely to die from a coconut falling on your head. And when I lived in Africa, that was a real fear. I mean, us white people would come and be like, oh, let's sit here, this is a great spot. And the locals would be like, no, move. Coconuts are above you, they are ripe, they can fall on your head and that can, seriously. So. 
just kind of to put it into perspective. Now, in terms of shark bite incidents, the data is, of course, a little bit larger. So not everyone who is bitten by a shark dies, but there are more people who are bitten by sharks per year. So I have the data over here. Give me a second. So if we're looking at 2019, there were 64 unprovoked attacks um, on people. I'd like to call them shark bite incidents because attacks makes it seem like really an unprovoked attack. While in a lot of cases, it's a case of mistaken identity. Again, we'll get into that later, but this is according to the shark file uh, statistic and I have just lost all my notes. All right, it's fine. It hasn't updated on my laptop, so I'm just gonna look at the data on there. Okay, so there were 64 unprovoked shark attacks. Unprovoked means these people did not have fish on them, they weren't feeding the sharks, uh, and there was no direct interaction. So it was just out of the blue, unprovoked bite. Out of those 64 unprovoked attacks, in terms of provoked attacks, uh, which occur when a human initiates interaction with a shark in some way. These include divers bitten after harassing or trying to touch sharks, attacks on spear fishermen, attacks on people attempting to feed sharks, bites occurring from unhooking or hooking up a shark from a fishing net, and so on and so forth. So there were 41 incidences of provoked shark attacks. Now, in terms of countries, we have US leading the score at 41. Um, shark bite incidents. We have Australia at 11 and then we have the Bahama Islands at 2. So overall, if you are going to be going into the ocean, there's a very, very tiny chance that you are going to get bitten by a shark. We'll get into reasons why a little bit later on in the video, but the statistics are that this is highly unlikely. You are much more likely to be killed by mosquitoes, by a hippo, by a car, by just about anything you can think of. I mean, four deaths per year is just tiny. And in terms of 100 bites in the world per year, again, that is a very small number. So now if um, statistics do not do it enough for you, the second thing I kind of recommend doing is getting to know the sharks or understanding shark behavior. Now, unlike what Jaws or many other movies that are keep being released are, um, yeah, telling us about sharks is sharks are not man-eater killing machines. Sharks do not just go out there hoping to get a snack on a human. Instead, they are the apex predators in their ecosystems and they're very vital to their ecosystems. Most of these sharks have been swimming around in the oceans for millions and millions of years and we have not been part of their normal food chain. We are land animals, which is why, um, you know, it makes sense that we are much more afraid of things like lions and crocodiles because those will come get you and they will want to eat you. Anyway, they're not out there to eat humans. There's over 440 species of sharks. Out of those 440 species of sharks, there's basically only three or four which people consider dangerous or at risk for humans. And this is the extremely large great white sharks because of their enormous size, of course, and because they do eat mammals, so seals. Then we have the tiger sharks, also extremely large. Then there are the bull sharks, which basically bite anything that they can when they're extremely hungry uh, and just the way, so they're just very aggressive sharks. But again, they hunt smaller things most of the time. And then we have the occasional bite from a reef shark. In Australia, there are shark nets up which target 19 species of shark. Out of these 19, again, there have only been incidents of the bull sharks and great whites I believe, and then unknown sharks of actually biting humans. So all these other sharks are just still killed and culled in Australia because people are afraid. And that's a whole separate video I'm gonna be making about shark nets. So let me know down below if that's something you wanna see, give it a thumbs up so I know whether you're interested in content like that. In terms of shark behavior, 
There are so many different sharks. I mean, some are the cutest little things. Port Jackson sharks, they're adorable. Um, it's definitely not fair to paint all sharks by the same kind of brush. And it's important to understand their behavior. Um, sharks don't have a way to figure out what you are. So they'll come and bump into you and use their electromagnetic sensors to figure out what you are. Um, they mostly become more active at dusk or dawn since that is when fish are either slowing down and going into their hidey holes or waking up and coming out of their hidey holes. That is when they feed prime time. I have dived with sharks many times at night and they will actually follow my torch and use the light of my torch as a way to capture fish. So many of the sharks as well, because of their size, they do not see us as prey. It's just not, we're not in their food chain. We're way too big. Um, majority of the sharks that we swim with, they'll just look at you and be like, that's a weird bubble breathing thing. And they'll stay away from you in the ocean you are guaranteed to be swimming with sharks all the time, but you will not see them most of the time and they don't want you to see them and they don't want anything to do with you. They stay away. So what's also important to know is that sharks do not feed all the time. So once they feed and they're full, they will quite often ignore food or prey. Um, while like we had the incidents of Ocean Ramsey and all those people swimming around that whale carcass with a lot of big great whites there. Those great whites were definitely not dangerous uh, as some of the, those great whites were considered not dangerous because they were satiated. They had just eaten from the whale carcass. So the divers felt more comfortable being in the water with them. I, I was reading a fantastic book about sharks where it was talking about your positioning in the water. So if you do come across a slightly larger shark, one of the best things you can do is get nice and vertical because you will actually appear larger. Because in the ocean, there's not many creatures which swim vertically, right? So they will just assume that's your size the whole way. So if you do get nice and vertical, they'll see you as a much bigger creature much less likely to even come and see what you are um, because they're scared, right? Sharks are pretty smart. If there is a chance that you're gonna get them. So also understanding shark behavior. So the third thing was kind of um, uh, understanding what, what is going on. We have the statistics here again. Um, the victim of a human at the time of the attack 53% have been surfing and board related activities, 25% surfing wading, I mean swimming wading, 11% snorkeling free diving, 8% body surfing, horseplay, and 3% scuba, right? So most of the incidents have been when people are on surfboards or on the surface paddling about, which is when you can most likely be mistaken for a seal or a turtle, which is what some of these larger sharks may want to eat. Non-existent risk, basically. The risk is so small, you don't have to worry about it. But if you do worry about it again, don't go out dusk or dawn. Stay away from the places where the locals tell you not to go. Since what's been happening a lot and what I've actually noticed on boats quite recently is there are certain areas where sharks have been trained essentially to follow boats and get food from them. So a lot of fishermen will fish off their boats and as they're pulling their fish up, the sharks will come and eat it, get it off the line. Or there are other places on the Great Bear Reef where people would just leave a lot of their food scraps in the water um, at certain places over and over again. So if a local is telling you, hey, um, there's a lot of shark activity there, either because of a fisherman leaving their carcasses or the sharks getting used to the fishermen, or there's a feeding frenzy going on where you can see the sharks flailing about, or um, there's a spot where um, the sharks are getting used to essentially eating scraps from boats. Maybe don't swim there. So just be smart about it. If there are precautions from locals, hey, do not swim in this area. Don't try and be a smart person and jump into the water. Like in the Brisbane River, in Brisbane where I lived for about seven years, um, no one swims. Why? Because it's extremely murky water. Bull sharks can actually swim quite far up into fresh water. And um, people haven't been eaten, but dogs have been taken. So it's kind of just like a smart thing. Don't jump into the stinky, murky water. Now you would have seen 
the videos of the guy getting attacked by a shark. It's one of the biggest viewed videos on YouTube of him getting attacked by a shark. If you look at the footage, you can see that he has a fish on him. So quite often, sharks will come and investigate your fish when you spear it. So if you spear a fish, you will quite likely have sharks come and to check out this fish. Of course, not only can sharks smell um, a drop of blood essentially in the size of an Olympic swimming pool, but they can also feel the distress, um, electromagnetic frequencies of a distressed fish. So if you've shot a fish, it's not dead and it's flailing, flailing about, it's going to attract sharks. And when sharks come to this, they are interested in the fish, not you. So spear fishermen will either quickly wind in the fish, hold it as close as they can to their body and kind of show the shark, hey, I'm big, this is mine. And the shark might follow them around and be like, oh, what's going on? I, I want some of that. Um, or if they're a bit more nervous, the spear fishermen, they can leave it a little further away on their spear. But in that case, sharks are more likely to approach and grab the fish. In all these cases, sharks are coming to get the fish. They're not after you. So please, if you want to get into spear fishing, I mean, it is one of the more sustainable ways of eating fish if you wish. Um, it's still not ideal. However, um, yeah, sharks are going to be interested in you because you are in their environment hunting their prey. So they will try and compete with you for it. Um, if you are holding it close on you and the sharks are particularly cheeky or particularly hungry, then they may really be coming close. Um, so people protect themselves with the spear or they simply kick at the shark. Uh, again, the shark is not, you know, aiming to eat you. It wants your fish. I think that makes sense. And lastly, the most important thing you need to remember about sharks is they are crucial in the health of our oceans. If you are too afraid of sharks to get into the water, despite um, the statistics, even after understanding their behavior, that they're not after you, that sometimes they may be curious and come up, but they're more scared of you uh, than you are of them. And also that we kill 150 million of them per hour and they kill four humans. I mean, if you're still afraid of sharks, simply don't go into the water. This is their environment and there's always a tiny, tiny chance that you might get bitten. But um, honestly, I've been bitten more by sergeant fish and I'm more scared of trigger fish. And while I sometimes still get nervous with sharks about, cause they are impressive apex predators. They are absolutely incredible and they are vital for the health of our ecosystems. The way they work, just like most apex predators, they go around and they pick off the sick and injured from communities, helping the communities thrive as a whole. Just like next week's podcast is going to be talking about more sharks um, in our ocean. So if we stop, culling them, that actually means more fish. And that is just because the food chain is healthy and balanced and they managed to sort it all out. I'm not a marine biologist. I'm not 100% sure how, but I highly recommend you check out the podcast next week. We talk about the shark cull film in Australia. And yeah, I hope this helps you a little bit about um, rationalizing the fear of sharks. It's normal. They are impressive fish but they're not after you and the key thing you can do to calm yourself down i mean what i do if i ever get nervous is always try and breathe slow and steady and the second thing if you really have a sharky feeling if something doesn't feel right in your gut just get out of the water because you being nervous probably is just not gonna help Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know your thoughts. Are you afraid of sharks? Why or why not? Let it down below. I would love to see you guys on the Ocean Pancake website and podcast page. And oh, I'm so tired. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'll see you guys there. Check it out in the doobly-doo and see you in the next episode.